Hey everybody, welcome back to How to Tie with your guide Shannon Messer from Tuckasegee Fly Shop out of Bryson City in Silva, North Carolina. As as you can see in here in my Norvise fly tying system, I do have the fine point jaws on it. I didn't mention that earlier in the other videos, but these are the fine point jaws. Uh, the fly I have in here today, and I'm going to tie for you folks, is a Jim Charlie Royal. Um, the, the tail on this particular pattern is golden pheasant tippet. Your body is some golden yellow poly. The band up here, which makes this the royal part, I'm going to be using some uh, Montana Fly Company um, thread. It's the midge body thread in red versus the floss. And then uh, typically on our hackle, we would use like a uh, like a dark ginger or a ginger hackle. I'm actually just going to be using a brown because that's what I have here. My ginger hackles aren't that great. I really picked through those really hard. And then on the wings itself right here, I'm going to use some hackle cut wings that are actually white in color. Now we'll be using Vivas uh, Tenno yellow thread on this particular fly. And I'm going to be tying it in a size 12 for you here today. While you got a moment right there, be sure to hit like and subscribe um, there. We like bringing you, excuse me, these videos. Nobody's nose ever itches, does it? Because mine just did. Surely the goodness. So here we go. Let's get our uh, hooks up secured in our fly tying system there. Look at that. Isn't that pretty smooth? If you guys are kind of curious about what it's like to tie on one of these vices, feel free to stop by the shop there in town. We'll let you take one out for a test spin uh, there at the tying desk and see if it's a vice that might be for you. It is a system. It is a fly tying system. It's awesome. As you can see right there, I've got my thread started and I'll demonstrate one of the things I like to do in some cases is I'll actually take my um, vise and put it in this position here and for fine work I can get in around that point there's a little straggler right there there we go like that but you know typically the way that you want to lay down a thread base is just by spinning okay so let's kind of get our position for our wings in here it looks really good all right so I've gone ahead and prepared us some of those hackle cut wings that I've demonstrated before in the past in other videos. They are white in color, as you can see. I see how I've got those laid to where they naturally splay apart, okay? Splay, that's a big word for me, okay? All right, I wanna position those right in here. While I've been doing that, my thread's been unwrapping a little bit, which is gonna cause it to kick backwards for me. Now I get here and I start to lift up. Lift up, more pressure, lift up, more pressure, lift up, more pressure, bam. I felt the one go, and then we got the other. I'm gonna kinda secure that right there, and I'm gonna come in here in just a moment, lift those stems up, and we have us an awesome set of wings. That's prettier than, I don't know what it's prettier than. I might say something and get in trouble, so I wanna be quiet. Nice, awesome. Now I'm going to take my thread real quick. I'm going to come to the back. You can see in there, I'm going to go ahead and snip that out of the way. Wham. Hope you all have been doing well. We've had some really nice weather here for us here. And what a year we've had so far, man. This, um, um, all the stuff we've all been going through, you know, it's, it's just something else for sure. Nothing like it in my lifetime. So we're going to take our golden pheasant tippet. I'm going to get that on top of the hook there. Gonna let it roll on top as you can see in there like so. Got us a nice looking tail. Looks real nice. Let's smooth that out a little bit right through there. Always want us to make sure we got a smooth body. Oops, as much as we can. Come right here to my point. And now I'm going to be taking some poly. This is some really, really old stuff here, but it's it's really neat stuff, but it's golden yellow. So you can use some golden yellow dubbing of your choice will work. We're not going to get too crazy. Um, you're not going to have the dubbing police come behind you and say, hey, you're doing it wrong. I'm not going to use any dubbing wax, and I'm also not going to use my dubbing feature, the Norvice, on this particular spot here. Um, but you've seen me do that several times. I've got some dubbing right there. I want to go ahead and start making wraps coming forward. I can see that pretty good. Hope y'all can see that. And I am kind of doing this your traditional way here that a lot of you guys have and gals. Let's see that body right there. Okay. All right. One thing about dumbing, you can always add to it, but you, it's very difficult to take away. Okay. 
keep that in mind. All right, super. Hope y'all been catching lots of fish. Nice, I'm gonna go back over that just a little bit, but a little bit more of a thicker body. Now, if you noticed here, I like to tie a lot of yellow flies. We fish a lot of yellow flies here in North Carolina, at least here in the mountains anyway. Um, we got a lot of, you know, yellow mayflies, yellow sallies. Uh, so some good patterns for those certainly is a pattern like this, a, a Jim Charlie, which I need to tie up for y'all, but uh, oops, got my a little too far. That's stuck to my fingers right there. You can back that off just a smidge. There we go. You want to come up here like this. How's that look for y'all? Um, a yellow palmer is a pattern that we fish quite a bit as well. Um, we fish that in pale yellow there. You can fish a female atom, which is a male atom with a yellow egg sac like that. Uh, it's real similar to that particular color there. So yellow is a popular color to fish here. If you're coming here to fish and you're tying up your own flies, really start tying you up some, some yellow fly patterns and um, you are going to be able to get on some fish topwater for sure. Now the next part, I'm going to tie in the, the banding material here, which is that Montana fly midge body thread in red. I really like it. It's easy to tie with and it doesn't get caught like on, on if you got, you know, things on your fingers, yeah, kind of work you might be doing. Uh, it's, it's not going to get caught in there, which is pretty cool. Now I'm rotating my vise here to give us that nice little band just in there like so. I want to come back over just a smidge. Let me wrap back over that yellow just a little bit in there like so. Just enough. Doesn't take a whole lot, but boy, it sure makes a good looking fly, doesn't it? It's pretty. That's real nice right there, Clark. Or it's real nice. Real nice. Yes, sir. I think Bob Ross would be proud of that right there because that's a happy looking fly. That's a real happy looking fly. Cool. Awesome. Nice. Dr. Slick, fine point scissors. I tell you, you know, scissors, there's a lot of different scissors out there in the market. You know, these fine points that get in here for delicate stuff. Uh, you're going to have your, uh, you know, I got these curved ones right here. I get in here with, you know, doing certain things, the way they, I hold them in my hand here. Um, you've got uh, like some scissors that we, these are really good on hair, you know, cutting out hair. That's something that you really don't think much about until you start tying, but having the right pair of scissors for the job you're doing can help you tremendously, tremendously. Um, so, you know, depending on what your budget is for scissors, it is a very important tool to have and it will make your life a lot easier if you have the right pair of scissors. To me, it's kind of like going out to a job site and you say you show up with a hammer, but if you go to a construction site where you're building a house or something, you might not want to show up with a ball ping hammer. You might want to show up with a claw hammer. So kind of the same thing in there, all right? So I'm going to take my feather, which I've already prepared for us. I'm going to go ahead and get that laid up here like so. Start to get that secured in there like that. I'm going to come in front, get the front part of that stem. As you can see, man, with these wings, I can take my fingers in there and grab them and pull them out of the way. Put them wherever I need to. Got a great little foundation laid there for the fly itself. I got a half hitch. I'm going to secure this over here on my holder. I'm going to push these wings forward. Now, something difficult to do with uh, hackle tip wings, but with these wings here that Roger showed me some years ago, it's easy to do. Now I want to start using the rotating feature on my Norvice. This feather's got a little bit of curve to it. It's kind of being a little funky donkey on me. A bit three wraps in the back. I want to push those out of the way. Come in here. Every time I do that, I hit that lamp. I'm going to start rotating. I try to kind of even these wraps out, but sometimes I do get a little bit more in the front than I do in the back. There we go. I'll probably go one more time in there like so. Hope y'all see that. I can actually go one more and I still think it will look really good. There we go. All right. Kind of come in here like this and we're going to have a really good clean eye of the hook. That is super important. Okay. Now make yours as bushy as you want. It's entirely up to you. If you're fishing some water that's really, really fast and it may have a little bit more white water action to it or the water level's high, you might want a bushier fly. If you're fishing, a, you know, water that's a little bit smoother and stuff, you know, then a, a fly like this might be more appropriate. But for tying purposes here, this is how I like to tie them. 
I'm gonna do a double whip finish in here like so. One, two, three, whammo. Man, I hope y'all like that fly right there. It's a pretty fly, but it also fishes really well. It's another one of Roger Lowe's patterns. And if you're looking, you know, uh, to tie up some of these flies, just give us a call at the shop and we can hook you up there with the materials. It's real simple. As I mentioned, golden pheasant tippet, some golden yellow dubbing, bright yellow. You're looking for your red, the red band. It could be floss. It could be your, um, your midge body thread, whatever you have lying around, you know, your hackle wings right there. You can do hackle tip wings. I just like using these cut wings. Then of course your, your hackle right there for sure. Size 12s, 14s, 16s would probably be as far as I'd go with this particular fly. We appreciate you folks for watching our uh, fly time videos once again. Be sure to hit like and subscribe so you know when other videos are coming out. Give us a call, 1-828-488-3333. And you, be sure to send me an email. That's Shannon, S-H-A-N-N-O-N, -N at tuckflyshop.com. Like to hear from you and like to see what you folks are tying up there for sure. Y'all take care and we'll catch you on the next video.